Hello, Ground Control. I'm Paul, and welcome to Retro Stellar, where touchscreen technology means sending all your money to a TV preacher. As a kid, one of my favorite toys was this, Wooly Willy, the cartoon face with a magnetic personality. Moving metal shavings around allowed you to give him different identities. Starting in 1955, the Smithport Company made dozens of variations of this toy, including Top Spy and Hairdo Harriet. I proudly own several of these shifty characters, and they still fascinate me. You know, without his iron filings, Wooly Willy is just bald. But there's a dauntless smile there that says, give me a Hitler stash, give me a mullet. When playtime is over and my soul patch settles to the bottom of the window, I'll be just fine. And in a way, that's how society has grown to view baldness, just fine. Treating hair loss is a $4 billion business in the U.S., but being a chrome dome is not just acceptable now, it's celebrated. The stigma is receding, pardon the pun. So it's time we honored the trailblazers who worked tirelessly to live hairlessly. Though I still have a bit of my hair left, I'm getting ahead of the curve and launching a new initiative. Legends of the Bald, the Celebrity Cue Ball Hall of Fame. Okay, so I've selected 32 nominees for the inaugural class. I'll pit them against each other in four brackets, tournament style, resulting in a quartet of inductees to be eternalized in a very special way, which you'll see at the end. Here's the criteria for nomination. First, as a subject of Retro Stellar, the nominee must have been celebrated in his category prior to 1999, which is the end of the analog age. This disqualifies guys like Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Vin Diesel. Secondly, the nominee must be known primarily as a bald person. Some celebrities, such as Sean Connery or Woody Harrelson, are often seen on screen wearing toupees or wigs. Disqualified. Samuel L. Jackson is such a culprit that I say he has the hardest working hair in show business. And this criteria also disqualifies females like Sinead O'Connor and Persis Cambada, who periodically grew out their locks. I've seeded the candidates by considering their relative fame, cultural impact, and career longevity. The four divisions are comedy, drama, sci-fi, and other, which I'll explain later. Let's begin in comedy. Don Rickles versus David Cross. Cross made his mark on Mr. Show and Arrested Development, but there's no way he's beating out the insult king. Plus, Cross made Alvin and the Chipmunks. Forget baldness, that's something to really be ashamed of. Peter Boyle versus Larry David. You know young Frankenstein and everybody loves Raymond, but did you realize that Peter Boyle got his start hosting a kid's show in Philadelphia under the stage name Chuck Wagon Pete? Larry David helped create Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Great shows, but everybody loves Chuck Wagon Pete. Another Seinfeld alum, Jason Alexander, is up against Carl Reiner a living legend who created The Dick Van Dyke Show and worked on many other classic shows. Alexander voiced one of my favorite cartoon characters, Duckman. Reiner won nine Emmy Awards, and though Alexander was nominated nine times for playing George Costanza, he never won. The guy with the prize moves on. Wayans vs. McLeod Gavin McLeod is a TV staple, having cemented his legacy on The Mary Tyler Moore Show and The Love Boat. He's also quite the song and dance man. But this category is comedy, and Damon Wayans was hilarious on In Living Color and he's continued to make hit shows in the years since. Wayans wins in a photo finish. Round two, Johnny Carson called Rickles his favorite guest and had him on The Tonight Show over 100 times. Sorry, Pete, enough said. Wayans just turned 58 and has had a nice career, but his 96-year-old opponent is still cranking. That 40-year head start means advantage Reiner. We'll come back to comedy in a bit for the final showdown. The drama division is full of award winners. You get an Oscar, you get an Emmy, you get a Golden Globe. Or maybe the Golden Globe comes first? Does having a shiny bald head guarantee critical acclaim? Telly Savalas versus Michael Clark Duncan. Both men were nearly 40 when their careers took off. Duncan will be remembered for The Green Mile, but Telly Savalas was a Bond villain and Kojak. Telly for the win. Early on, Michael Chiklis was known for playing the chubby regular Joe. In 2002, he shaved his head and got in shape. The result was a big career boost and getting mistaken for our next nominee, Bruce Willis. Chiklis was great as The Thing, but Zed's dead, baby, so Bruce takes this round. You might say, hey, Paul, no hair pieces on screen. I thought that was a rule. Doesn't that disqualify Bruce? Maybe, but he's had a shaved head in half his movies. Plus, I like his quote, hair loss is God's way of telling me I'm human. Robert Duvall versus Ving Rhames. Duvall is a revered Oscar-winning actor who's been bald in most of his films. But Ving Rhames was in Piranha 3D. Rhames for the win. Ed Harris and Ben Kingsley. Harris won't let go of his wispy horseshoe hair. Seriously, trim that back. It's a bad look, even if you have the bluest eyes in Hollywood. This round goes to Gandhi. Round two. Pulp Fiction convinced me that Ving Rhames is capable of murder. 
and I'm reminded of that every time I hear his voice on an Arby's ad. Kingsley may deserve to win, but I'm not going to take the risk. Telly Savalas wasn't just bald. He was unabashedly bald at a time when it was considered a defect. There would be no cue ball Hall of Fame without him. And Bruce Willis released that terrible harmonica album, The Return of Bruno. Telly takes it. Next up we have Sci-Fi. Patrick Stewart versus Conrad Janis. Captain Picard against the dad from Mork and Mindy, please. Donald Pleasance and Robert Picardo. Picardo played a fun character in Star Trek Voyager, but Donald Pleasance somehow made his odd, twitchy personality work for a 50-year movie career. He may be Blofeld to some, but to me he'll always be Mr. President from Escape from New York. Clint Howard is another weird guy who's defied the odds to find success in showbiz, but look into Yul Brynner's hypnotic stare and try to deny him. Mitch Pelegi versus Avery Brooks. Skinner of the X-Files or Cisco from Deep Space Nine. They're both pretty cool, but Brooks played the coolest TV character ever as Hawk in Spencer for Hire. It's obvious. Sir Pat Stu is breezing through against all comers. The fact that I don't need to give you any factoids says it all. Sorry, Dr. Loomis. Resistance is futile. I've lost my free will. Yul Brenner is staring into my very soul. He's moving on. I have no choice. Now we're in the other category. This division is for celebrities who don't easily fit into a specific genre. First off, we have a matchup of Michaels. Air Jordan versus Pluto. The Hills Have Eyes was one of the first horror movies I ever saw, and Michael Berryman scared the crap out of me. But I hear he's a pretty nice guy off screen. Credit for not letting ectodermal dysplasia keep him down. That said, Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. John Malkovich versus the Blue Man Group. This is why the category is called Other. Blue Man Group created their own genre, but John Malkovich is, well, other. He's such a good actor, he could make taking a nap fascinating. Three avant-garde drummers in dazzling cobalt makeup are no match for a sleeping Malkovich. You know, at first I couldn't decide whether or not to include Dr. Phil, but then I pictured him in a cage match with LL Cool J, and let's just say it's very satisfying to imagine a real-life version of Mama Said Knock You Out. John Glenn versus Moby. Moby may be the coolest and nerdiest guy on this list. He's a passionate D&D player, but he's also a legendary musical innovator. His tracks have been licensed over a thousand times, earning him millions of dollars, most of which he's given to charity. John Glenn was an astronaut. Round two, Jordan versus Malkovich. John Malkovich may have started a movie called Being John Malkovich, but nobody's buying his shoes. MJ defeats JM. LL Cool J versus John Glenn. Going back to Cali is an old school jam that still holds up, but John Glenn's resume looks like it was describing the accomplishments of four guys. Glenn moves ahead. With the preliminaries out of the way, we're left with our final eight nominees. In comedy, it's Rickles versus Reiner. Both are legends, but this list is subjective, and Rickles was the voice of Mr. Potato Head in Toy Story, so no contest. The drama finals. Though I'm still scared that Ving Rhames might hunt me down, rip my still beating heart from my chest while screaming, we have the meats, I can't deny Telly Savalas. Come on, the dude made lollipops look cool. In sci-fi, I've shut my eyes to Yul Brynner and made the clear choice. You've known since the beginning that Captain Jean-Luc Picard, Professor Charles Xavier, Sir Patrick Stewart, Knight of the Order of the British Empire, was going to be in the Bald Guy Hall of Fame. Engage. And finally, in other, it's a slam dunk. When Jordan shaved his head in 89 and went from his hairness to his airness, everything changed. For him and the millions of men with male pattern baldness. Even 15 years after retirement, he's still the world's most recognizable and bankable sports star. The battles are over, the dust has settled, leaving us with four Legends of the Bald. To commemorate the occasion, I hereby unveil Mount Brush No More, where we will forever affix their hairless heads. Cue the ceremonial music. Don Rickles, what a hockey puck. Welcome to the Bald of Fame. Telly Savalas, we love you, baby. Welcome to the Bald of Fame. Michael Jordan, they will never forgive you for covering that shiny skull with a baseball helmet. Welcome to the Bald of Fame. Patrick Stewart, despite your many honorary degrees, your star on Hollywood Boulevard, and your coveted knighthood, I know this is the honor you've been waiting for. Welcome to the Bald of Fame. Stop the ceremonial music. It is written, the Bald of Fame. Before I sign off, I have to show you this brief video. As far back as preschool, when I think of baldness, this hypnotic clip from Sesame Street has been popping into my head. It's James Earl Jones, with his head shaved, reciting the alphabet. A, B, C, D. Hair or no hair, that guy is a national monument. I've linked to the whole clip here. 
Well, congratulations to our four honorees forever enshrined in Mount Brush No More. If you take exception to my cue ball considerations, please let me know in the comments or message me on Twitter. And be sure to stop by overjupiter.com for some great holiday gift ideas. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time on Retro Stellar. Remembering yesterday's tomorrow's today. Thank you so much for watching. Please take a second and click the subscribe button to see future videos. Go to overjupiter.com for the best sci-fi, superhero, and pop culture t-shirts on this or any planet. Use the code RETRO15 to save 15% store-wide. See you next time.